Okay, in this video, we are moving on to Chapter 3 or Module 3 in our um, list of lessons, if you look on D2L. So in Chapter 3, we are going to talk about a um, few topics. I'm going to start with input failure. So I'm going to create a new project first for our Module 3. I'm going to call it Module 3. Again, I have to emphasize, please create your projects and your files appropriately so we don't have all these different folders, all of them called console applications or all your files being called source.cpp. So we're going to create Win32, Win32 console application module 3 is what I'm going to call my project. We say OK and then create. Make sure you go to application settings, say empty project, finish it. So module 3. And the first thing we are going to talk about is input failure. So I'm going to add new item and I'm going to call it not source.cpp but input failure. We'll call it input failure and it's a cpp file. Add and there we go. So I'm going to say this program um, demos input failure. So in the process it also shows you how to use the scene.clear and yeah, functions and scene.ignore functions. So the dot, as we all know, is a member access operator, scene, other than also reading from the input using the extraction operator, has functions like clear and ignore to take care of a lot of things um, while reading from the console. So first of all, let's see what is input failure. So we're going to say, spell include IO stream and using namespace std. Okay, so we're going to write a program, a very simple program at that. So we're going to just have two integers, int num1. In fact, one integer should do it. Int num1 equals 0. And maybe a float num2 equals 0. And we're going to tell the user. So these are my variables. Some quick comments. Now, input from the user. So C out. I'm going to say, please enter a whole number. So we want them to enter a whole number and we're going to read it into num1. Then I'm going to tell them please enter a real number and semicolon read it into num2. And I'm going to say echo the input. What does that mean? We are simply going to tell them you entered, we are echoing the input, which is whatever they entered. You entered num1 equals, and whatever they entered, num1, and num2 equals, again, whatever they entered for num2, and an end line. So it's a very simple program. As you know, we are just declaring two variables and we are reading it from the user. So what could go wrong? That is our question and how to fix it. So let's build it and run it. So if all goes well, it says enter whole number. I'm going to enter 23. It says enter real number. I enter 12.456 and it says, okay, you entered num1 is 23 and num2 is 12.456. That's if all goes well. Now let's run it again. Control F5. Now it says enter whole number. What happens if I enter A by mistake? Now it did not wait for the next prompt where I said please enter a real number. Notice it does not wait. It simply goes into the output mode and you get num1 and num2 as 0. So what happens is input failure. So C in 
as it reads numbers can read only numbers integers so when it tries to read a letter cn fails when cn fails it does not read anymore and it stops reading so what we need are two functions to help us recover from the state so after we read the input we are going to reset cn back to the original state and to do that we use cn.clear it simply says clear everything out the next thing we need to do is we need to clear the garbage or whatever it was that was entered on the screen so the screen which means it's the same as an input buffer we need to clear the contents of the input buffer input buffer or the unwanted information that was entered before that's what that is so we want to make sure that's not there anymore entered before so to do that we use cn dot ignore and ignore takes two parameters the first one happens to be a number that says how many characters do we want to ignore and I pick a random number of 100. Hopefully, the user will not enter more than 100 characters. And then how far, how much of it do we want to ignore? The backslash n is a character for new line that says, I either want to ignore 100 characters or the new line character, whichever comes first. So if the user does not enter more than 100 characters, then we're going to hit new line first because the user enters A, B, C, D and hits enter. And that enter goes in as new line. And so it will ignore any garbage character until the new line, including the new line itself. So when we are done with that, our CN is back to a good state. And now we can read num2. Now what happens if the user puts in something else for num2? Then we need to do the same thing. So ideally, after reading every single input, the goal is to do that. So let's see if that helps. So all I have done is clear and ignore. And of course, in this case, it's going to clear and ignore, and then it's going to ask for the next number. So let's see how this process works. So it says enter whole number, read it, and then we're going to clear and ignore if it has failed. And of course, there is no if condition here. So unconditionally, it's going to clear and ignore whether we enter a good input or not so we got to test both so let's enter a good input 23 okay it says enter real number 1.234 and it's fine and since you entered num1 as 23 and num2 as 1.234 now let's run it again and put in some bad input and see how that works so if i put in a well it doesn't do anything and it says enter a real number so 12.34 234 so notice now for num1 we get a zero because I entered A, but it still at least continued my program and we got 12.234. Now here are a couple of other things we could do or that could potentially happen. What if I enter in the place of a, for a whole number 2.34A and then for a real number 12.34 whatever by mistake I have a D. Notice for my whole number, I got a 2 because a point does not belong to a whole number. And of course, we have our statement here that says clear and ignore. So it's going to fail at the point. But of course, our clear statement is going to clear it. And our ignore statement is going to ignore everything until the new line, which happens to be after A. So everything gets ignored. 2 gets taken into num1. And the same for 12.245D, where it reads it until the D. And of course, at D, it fails but our two statements here take care of it now ideally this is a topic um, the the input failure is covered in chapter three but i'm going to show you something next which makes a little bit more sense than to do this unconditionally i'm going to show you a quick loop which is covered only in chapter five and um but i'm going to show it to you real quick so why do we have to do it unconditionally we don't have to do it unconditionally we're going to check for input failure. How do we check? C in when it goes into a fail state has, returns a zero. So we're going to use that and we're going to say while. It's a very simple while loop. 
the keyword is um, while while not cn and then we are going to put the rest of our code in that loop saying that we want to do it only if cn fails <coughs> so while not cn simply says if cn fails it returns a zero and then not cn will eventually be a one which means this condition will be true when that condition is true, we go into the while loop. And we come into the while loop and we clear and we ignore. And also ideally what we should do here is after we clear and ignore, we want to ask the user for the input again. So as long as the user enters bad input, we're going to be sitting inside this loop. So we're going to tell the user bad input, please try again. And then we are going to read again. See in what are we reading? We are reading num1. So we're going to read that num1 one more time when it fails. So we come into this loop only if cn has failed, which means if the user enters bad input here. While not cn, as long as cn is in a failed state, we come in here, we clear, we ignore, and we tell the user to enter the number again now again remember you don't have to do this for any of your assignments through the entire term of this class but just the input failure part but it is a very good concept to understand and be able to use it so you know why sometimes your program fails and also going into 162 you will need to learn and understand this concept so if you want try this if not you may simply read your number go on to read the next number um, and test your program that way first when you have it all working if you um, feel like it and if you're up to it use the input failure and check it again now since I have the loop working I'm going to take that loop and also put it in for my next number so I'm going to simply copy that part and I'm going to put it in here right here the same thing but I need to make some small changes here I'm not reading num1 again I'm reading num2 so this loop now is for num2 so it checks cn after reading num2 if it has failed we go in and do the same thing so that is really what input failure is all about and again for your assignments for this term I will not test with bad input I am always going to test with good input but again, this is a concept that is good for you to understand and this should help.